the exact same pattern for the ears and the legs. So you're just gonna do this one pattern six times, okay? Super, super simple. I love that it was able to work out that way. So give yourself about four inches of slack. You're gonna chain two or magic ring. We're working in rounds again. Put six single crochets in that first chain or inside your magic ring. Six, that was round one. Round two, you increase across, so two single crochets in each space around. You should end with 12 single crochets. Okay, round three, you're going to increase in the first, single crochet in the second. Increase, single crochet. Repeat that pattern all the way around. You should end with 18 stitches. So increase, then one. Awesome, great. Use our marker tail. Row four through row 10. So row four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, and 10. It's just gonna be single crochet in each space around. I will meet you at the end of round 10. Okay, we've reached the end of uh, round 10. Go ahead and cut off a long tail so we can attach this to the work. We're going to slip stitch in the first space and yarn through to pull that through, okay? So this is one of six. You need to make a total of six of these. How you make them, you put six single crochets in the first chain or the magic ring, increase in every space around for 12 in round two, then in round three, it's increase, then one single crochet. Increase, one single crochet. Round four through round 10 is just single crochet in each space around. So you want a total of six of those. Go ahead and keep working, and I will meet you back here with a total of six so we can move on to the next step. Cool. Great, now we have all six of these created, two of them, Two of them will be for our ears and four of them will be for our legs. Let's go ahead and make the tail real quick. That way we can just get right to assembly afterwards. So go ahead and we just need a short tail if you are going to be using the marker tail or go ahead and use your markers. A slip knot. The tail is super short so having a two inch tail is perfect. Slip knot. Tension. Okay, gonna go ahead and chain two or magic ring, whichever you're most comfortable with. I really like the chain two. We're going to put four single crochets in that first chain or inside your magic ring. So, four, go ahead and take that tail, that marker tail, yarn that over, pull it through your loop, all right, so now we're going to go straight into round two. Round two is single crochet in each space around. Three and last one, because we know there's four spaces. And Four, perfect, reach to the end, grab that marker tail, yarn over, pull through. Great, now row or round three, four, and five are just single crochet in each space across, and that is it. And we will end after row five. So go ahead and put one single crochet in each space around for row round three, four, and five. I will meet you at the end of round five. End of round five. Go ahead and slip stitch in that very first space. It's very tight because it's super small quarters in there. So slip stitch right there. I'm gonna grab my scissors. 
leaving myself a long tail so I can sew the tail onto my sheep. Taking the yarn strand that was attached to my working yarn, I'm going to yarn over, pull through, pull that tight, and that is my knot. Come in from the inside out, pull that in, next space over, pull the little one in. Great, pull those tight, they are now on the inside of the work, tie your knot. Now because this is so thin, so teeny tiny, I can't just shove this little tail in there. So what I do is I go through the very center hole of the work, work it all the way along to the opening. I will yarn over so that it catches in the hook and pull that in and then I'll twist it so that the yarn comes off of the hook inside the work and it is concealed. Perfect. Okay, we have made all of our pieces. Now all we have to do is attach everything to our amazing sheet. So here we go. All right, let's start by grabbing one of the six pieces. I'm going to take the tail and thread my tapestry needle or my yarn needle. Thread that through, perfect. Okay, I start with the ears. So looking at our sheep, <clears throat> you take this piece and you fold it in half like that. Okay, so the opening is this right here. Just fold it and then fold it in half like that. So it makes that cute little, little ear. I look at my sheep. So where am I placing this on my sheep? You find the shape of the face that you feel like, okay, that's the top of the head. It looks like a good top. This looks like a good cheeks and mouth section, how I stuffed it. That's just how the stuffing fell. That looks pretty great to me. When it comes to where I put my ears, you can either take a ruler or take your crochet hook and lay it on the top of your sheep's head, okay? I'm going to put my ear right underneath that hook. Okay, so that is where I place my ear. Because sheep's ears, they're not up on top of their head. They are more on the side of their head. So this is where I'm going to place my ear, right there. So the hardest part really is just keeping it there. So I just apply pressure holding it to the work where I want it, then looking at the holes where that are in line with my ear, I will just sew the ear to the, the head. Keeping one hand, holding the ear to, holding it down, holding it still, and the other one sewing. So in the work, then in the ear. Then in the work. And in the ear. If you have to lax this part open a little bit so you can turn, go ahead and do that. So in the work. Right about here is where I'll re-look and be like, okay, so I need to fold it this way to keep it in line with itself. You can either have it directly in line or you can have the bottom one kind of in a little bit more. But you definitely don't want it out more because then it'll start looking real funky. Okay, so line it up, push it in. Okay, so it's in line right there. Okay, and go right there, my work, right there, work, okay, and I want to make sure that these are close together, so 
So if it wants to be in line right there, that means it's going to be following right in this area. So looking to see where I want it to lay, then remove it. And those stitches are right in line. Perfect. Okay, towards the end, I will then, I want them together. So what I will do is I will, so it's in my actual ear right, you know, right now, coming out of my actual ear. I'm going to come all the way across. And that cinched it together, just like that. And then to secure, I'll go into the actual head all the way around there we go and my ear is secure so i'll look at it making sure i didn't miss any pieces no major holes no major gaps and it looks pretty good to me so what i will do is i will go ahead and i will go into the next space see here's where my yarn is coming out of this hole right right there i'm going to go into the next hole over I come back through and I'm holding this still. I'm going to take this loop that I held back from being pulled into the work and I'm going to twist it. So here's it, here it is. I'm going to twist, reinsert my needle into that loop and slowly pull and that just creates a knot. Insert my needle into that hole, have it go all the way through the work, pull it through and that little extra tail that's in the head, I'm going to cut that off. Now the tail that was through the stuffing in the head is secure to the body. All right, so there is ear number one. Let's do ear number two. I'm going to put our crochet hook again right there in line with our sheep. So I'm going to put it down so that way I can position or grab that ear. Crochet hook right there, stick my ear right under, right there. Perfect. Okay. And attach just like we did with ear number one. Okay, that's the last space right there. To close them together, I'm gonna bring that thread that was inside the ear there through to the other side. Closes them together. I'm gonna go back into the head to the other side. Close that off. I'm gonna tie the knot. So here is the hole that my yarn's coming out of. Go into the next hole next to it. Okay. Twist that loop. Yarn into that loop. And pull it through. Just like that. Okay. Insert your needle into the head and pulling it out. Now this little bit is small enough where if I literally just squeeze the head about it ends up getting sucked inside. So it's gone. I didn't even have to cut anything. Well, great. There are our ears for our cute little sheep. Now let's do the legs. So we have four pieces left over here, our four legs. So we're going to grab number one, thread our needle with the tail. 
I'm going to stuff the leg. All right, so where do we put this leg? So we go to the belly of the sheep. Pretend that there's an invisible line dividing the sheep equally in half, okay? We are going to put the leg on the left side of that invisible line right after the decreases or increases, whichever side this is. I think it's the increases. So we increased here, we increased here, then there's a bobble. So we're gonna put the leg on this side of that second bobble, okay? Perfect. Let me just hold it in place. So this hand holds it still while this hand sews it in place. So I go into the work and I come through the actual leg. We've reached the end of the leg. Do a quick look. I'm gonna go ahead and just make sure I cross it so I didn't miss any spot. Go ahead and give a quick look around your leg to make sure that there are no major holes, that you didn't accidentally miss a spot. We're just double checking. Okay, everything looks good. Go ahead and reinsert your yarn needle into a space right next to where our yarn is attached to the work. Pull that through, but hold some back. Going to twist it, insert the needle into that loop, and pull through to knot. Inserting our yarn needle back in, and just anywhere through that work. Okay, taking our scissors, and cutting off that extra tail. Great, okay, leg number two. Great, okay, so looking back at the belly of the sheep, Referring back to our invisible line, cutting the sheep in two for symmetry. Going to find that same spot, so two bobbles down, two bobbles down. And remembering the line of symmetry here, I want to have this leg the same number of spaces from that invisible line as this leg. So I see that there is one bobble here, so I'm going to do one bobble here. We go. Okay, one more to cross over, making sure that I entered into that first space again. Make sure there's no extra hole there where that marker tail where I started sewing. And I'm just going to secure it. Twist that loop. Slowly pull so it doesn't further into the string that I want it to. There we go. Okay, foot number three. There we go. We look at our line of symmetry. 
I want this foot to be behind this one in line with it, but also two bobbles in. That's where I want my foot to be. Okay, I want my foot in line with this one, the first front left and two bobble rows up. Okay, also watch your line of symmetry here. It's going to twist, everything twists a bit, so instead of being two off, I'm going to be more in line with this one that kind of curves this way. Great, and this was the first one that we started sewing into, so I'm going to go ahead and cross into that one to make sure there's no hole, and I'm going to tie my knot to close. For the last leg, I decided to pretend what if I did not leave myself a tail, I cut them too small. So what you would do if you did not leave yourself a long enough tail, you would grab your yarn, same color obviously, cut off enough for a tail, put that aside, thread this in, there we go. Go to right where we tied it off, which you can find with your marker tail here or wherever there's a knot on the inside. I want that tail to be invisible. Okay. And I'm going to go into the next one. So next hole, next space, like that. So now the yarn is facing the inside of the work. And I'm going to tie a knot. That helps to make it invisible. Don't have a big old knot sticking out the side of your beautiful work. Okay, now we stuff. Okay, attaching the fourth and final leg. I want to have my beginning generally facing the inside of the work. That way when I tie the knot, it's on the inside of the work. Okay, so two bobbles in, have it in line with the front, but I also want it to be symmetry with the line. So there's two bobbles separating the top two legs. So one, two bobbles to separate the bottom. If these two in the back are closer together, that's perfectly fine. Great, and crossing over, perfect. Don't forget to check all the way around to make sure you didn't miss a spot, a connection, okay? Just always good, that way you don't end and feel like, oh no, I missed that. And the work. Awesome. I got my only had a little bit left, so it just completely got tucked in to the inside of my sheep. Perfect. The legs are attached. It's almost done. We just have the tail to attach and then we'll deal with the eyes. So attaching or threading the tail into the yarn needle. Looking at the back portion, he's so big, back portion of our sheep, 
finding that line of symmetry that would divide him equally in half. Okay, and then we find the hole that we closed. We remember that's the hole that we draw strained closed. So I'm going to put the tail right above that hole and in perfect line of symmetry of the sheet. Let's say, for example, you go to sew your tail on, and before you tie that knot, we're checking, we're like, uh, is that where I want it? And you're like, oh no, it's like way off to the side. It's completely wrong. All you would do is unthread your needle. You'd pull the tail from the work, and you'll see your stitches that attached to the body. You would just simply un thread those stitches. Reposition your tail where you wanted it. Okay. Reposition and then re-sew to attach. And last there we go. Okay, I am happy with that little tail. It's so cute. Oh my gosh. So go ahead and tie it off. That knot that we do with twisting the yarn, reinserting the needle, and pulling that through. Just like that. Perfect. Okay, so the last thing we need to do is the eyes. That's it. And then he is done. Oh my goodness. When it comes to choosing the eyes of your sheep, you can really personalize this section also. Perfect opportunity. You can either use, so the one that I used in my example, I used the sleepy eyes. This is really, really cute and it works well with baby themes because you just want that feeling of sleepy, peace, calm, and so the sleepy eye can work out really great for that. It also gives parents of brand new babies peace of mind that there's no button that the baby can chew off and have a choking hazard. So that is option number one. You can use color options too. Do I want to use black? On this white sheep will that color be too harsh do I instead want to use a brown color will that be softer much more appealing to the eye you can also use button eyes where you could sew the buttons onto the sheep have that little indent look right there that is super cute sorry my thumbs are in the way but then you have those cute little <laughs> black eyes right there. The only problem with eyes is, for example, my yarn needle is going to be too big to fit in that eye. So I would have to then find a regular needle and regular string to sew this button onto my sheep. Extra materials, if you want to do that, go for it. Not a problem. You do you. This is all yours to make your very own. I would most likely put this button eye, I would sew this button eye, line of symmetry, middle of my sheep. We're looking at row or round one, two, three, four, five, six, seven. I'd probably sew it on round seven and I'd probably sew it one, two, three, one, two, three, four, five, six spaces down. And that's me eyeballing it right now, okay? You can put your eye wherever you want, but that's where I would put it if it were me, okay? So because I am not going to have the extra materials, I'm sticking with the sleepy eye shape just so it can be more versatile. I am actually digging the taupe color with this cream color. Those colors seem to really complement each other. So I'm gonna get rid of the black. 
I'm going to get rid of this one button that didn't run off on me. Found the end of this yarn right here. Grab my scissors. Give myself enough of a slack so that way I can really form that eye. Okay, so threading that yarn right like that. Looking at the center of my sheep. Okay, so line of symmetry right in the middle here. I'm going to do a swooping motion with my eye. So I'm going to start the eye, one, two, three, right after the third round in that spot right there. So if that's where I'm starting, I'm then going to go This is again all going to be personalized. This is a lot of eyeballing. So I'm going to want my eye to start here, stop there. So I started it one, two, three, four, five, six rounds, the end of the sixth round. I inserted my needle the end of the seventh round. That's going to eventually get pulled into the work you'll see. So started, put into the end of the seventh round right there to come out the sixth round. I'm then going to form a like U shape, just like an I. So I'm going to go diagonal. Find that space, go diagonal down, insert my crochet hook, and go over straight. This is going to be a lot of following the picture. It's kind of hard to explain it. I'm going to go back into that same spot right there. I'm going to go straight straight down okay I want to go back this way but this time I want to angle diagonal angle up so that closes there and then I'm going to do that so go back into that hole to line everything up. I'm going to go back in that same hole I just came out of. See how it makes that beautiful little U? I went back in that hole because I want to double up those stitches to make it a more bold line. I want a more bold line. So just came back out there and I'm just going to retrace my steps back around to make it thicker. So if you look, it's a lot more pronounced, a lot easier to see from further away. Okay, the reason why I didn't go all the way through on this one is because I make eyelashes. I think the eyelashes are very sweet. So when we make the eyelash, you're going to go in this next space over of the eye line. And then attach. This space right here, I'm go one down. That's where I'm going to stick my needle through to bring up for the next eyelash. Okay, next space, one down for the next. This space right here we're going to go one down it's kind of diagonal just follow the work and your last space right there going oh sorry I'm gonna finish attaching this eyelash <laughs> to the eye line but this space right here goes down one space There we go. We're not going to double up the eyelashes. I don't need those to be super bold. But I will go to the very first space that this yarn is sticking out of. Pull that through. Great. 
I will inspect my work before I tie it. Do I like it? Am I happy with it? And that looks darling. That just looks super adorable. Super flattering. I like it. So I'm going to tie these together. Cut this off. Take my crochet hook. Any space in the work. Pop it out of that same hole, that same space these two strings are coming out of. Yarn those over, pull them in, and they are gone, disappeared. Let's do the next eye. Okay, right in the line. I'm going to want to start that hole right there, so come in the top so I don't get in line, in line with the eyelash. It goes down, we go down, then it goes straight back. So we'll go straight back. Okay, and then it goes straight back again. So we will go straight back again. And then it curves up on the end to make that U shape. So Diagonal, <clears throat> diagonal right there. Perfect. And I'm going to go back into that space for that bold look. And it looks like a great U shape. Is it in line with the other one? Oh my goodness. It's perfect. Great. So then go ahead and go back through your, over your stitches just to make them bold. We want them to be two yarns thick. Great. And then eyelashes are one stitch apart. Okay, so. And this last one, I'm going to do diagonal. Okay, and I'm going to reinsert my needle in that same hole that I started with. Great. Inspection before I tie off. Super cute. Okay, I'm going to tie this. Cut off the extra slack, grab my crochet hook, inserting in any hole, and coming out to that same hole as my knot, yarning over those two strands, and pulling them into the work. Perfect. Okay, mold it about a little bit, reshape it, and there you guys go. Meet your sheep. He is precious. You are going to find people asking you to make them one. You're going to have many, many people just absolutely adore this. The kid or the person or the baby that gets this as a gift is going to just adore it. Very special. I hope you love it. Well, here he is. So. I really do adore him. I hope you do too. Uh, I did finish my gray one. I kept the sleepy eyes just because I wanted them all to look the same. So when I go to give them away, they all have a uniform look to them and they don't look very different. Though the buttons are super cute as well. I really like them also. So if you chose to do to put buttons on your sheep for the eyes, I'm sure it just looks adorable. So how did you? think of the tutorial. If you liked it, please give me a thumbs up. If you haven't yet, subscribe to my channel. What did you think of the setup behind me? I will probably be moving things around in all of my videos, shuffling things so you can see things that you can't see because they're behind me. They'll probably be pulled forward. What did you think of me sitting down? <laughs> 
a lot of you said that you wanted to see me actually sitting down when I talked. So you care? Do you prefer one or the other? <laughs> Let me know in the comments below if you have a question on how to make this beautiful sheep, anything in particular, ask in the comment section below. Uh, check out my notes section for the pattern, for the materials, and for a video recommendation that might help with the sheep if you need any help. Well, thank you so much for spending time with me today. I really had a great time showing you how to make this sheep. If you have any questions, again, comment, but I will see you with my next video. <laughs> Bye guys. <laughs>